It's October 8th, 2007. I'm Dave. I'm Seth. I'm Joe. And we're Biff. This is episode four of the Biff Podcast. We're coming to you live from uh, the Biff basement. <laughs> it's been a long ass time since we've done a podcast. And there's a damn good reason for that. Nothing to fucking talk about. Well, that's right. Plus, we're lazy, um, uninspired, without ambition. And we're not even busy. It's we're pretty... smoking weed. What are you talking about? Weed? I said, or smoking weed. Fuck, Jesus. You need to stop smoking weed. So, anyway. There's been a lot of Biff happenings over this past summer. We've been working very hard on a new album. <laughs> <laughs> nice push, Seth. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. No, Dude. hey. Uh, great. It's called Biff Re. And, uh, I thought it was Re Biff. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. It's called Re Biff. And basically, we, the. All right, let's let's go through the history here. And Joe, you jump in because you were there. <laughs> Seth didn't come to later, but that's okay. We got. He was an awe-inspired fan. That's right. That's right. I was. We got the first two albums, Biffarama and President Biff, which we recorded when we were teenagers in my parents' basement shack with a little mini disc recorder and you know it was great for the time and it served its purpose to get our music out there but we always wanted to redo those old songs you know with our new recording technology so that's exactly what this new album new old album is all about rebiff we are taking a bunch of these old tracks that we've been playing lately and re-recording them for your listening pleasure and we uh Basically, we'll have that out very soon, as soon as I get the mix done with it. And it will be available for download at biffnet.com, as well as at our shows, for free, because we can't even give those fuckers away. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what do you guys think we play a track from this uh, b- r- uh, um, re-biff? Sounds good. All right. Joe, you want to set this one up? Which one is it? Grand Slam. Oh, no, see, I, I can't say much because, Dave, you know all the intricacies of that song. That's true. Well, this song is called Grand Slam. Uh, I wrote it about, basically it was inspired by Henry Rollins. I was uh, reading his book. A book about Black Flag called Get in the Van. And there was a part in the book where he discusses uh, the fact that a friend of his was having a Grand Slam breakfast at Denny's in honor of the four girls he had had sex with the uh, previous day. And, uh, you know, at first I kind of thought that was pretty funny. And uh, when I thought about it more, it, it kind of was a little bit disgusting to me as well. Because uh, that's just too much. When you guys agree, mm, yeah, yeah. it's a bit much. Four girls and yeah, not necessarily. <clears throat> Depends on how much coke. Depends you've on done. how much cheese was on the taco. <laughs> <laughs> well, it offended me, and uh, so I wrote a song about it called "Grand Slam." And uh, we'll go ahead. <laughs> Here it is. Check it out. The new version off Biff Re or Re Biff.
about it. The more that I live without it, then you claim you can help in the pain of what I Fellas, that was uh, the new version of Grand Slam off Rebiff, which will be out very soon. And uh, don't hold your breath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a special guest on the Biff Cast tonight, Mr. John Hereshka. Uh, we asked John to come down and, and hang out with us tonight. He is uh, a uh, engineer of former Biff material <laughs> since we we're talking about old Biff stuff. And back in, in the old days of Biff, when we were first together, we uh, would take many trips up to Fort Collins to record in the studio that John had built up there. John, welcome. Thank you, Dave. What can uh, you remember about those days when, when we were recording Biff up at uh, 623 and whatnot? I remember being being fairly trying, actually. <laughs> because I really didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> and in addition to that, it's never a good idea to introduce uh, alcohol to uh, virgin brains <laughs> while you're trying to record. <laughs> yeah. What were we, like, probably 19? Yes. I don't know about you you guys, but that was the first time I, ever, I had ever drank alcohol was up there. I've been loaded many times before. I don't know. And I think Joe was, was seasoned because when I asked what yeah. I should get at the liquor store, he knew exactly what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt was definitely in my boat, though. But we were drinking White Russians that first night. Yes. Those will and, make you shit. And there is a question that one glass then, was possibly a light fixture. Yes. Or something they make you thing. shit? Oh, yeah. The cream. That's a good segue. I, I got to digress <laughs> a little bit. Although, I know I, I know Grand <laughs> Slam is somewhat of an inspiration, you know, given to you by Rollins. I think after 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 hearing you talk about it, um, I, we kind of came up with this new, like, meaning of it in our circle of friends. So we basically... <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> We consider a grand slam if you shit more than four times in a day. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, given the right food and the right amount of uh, alcohol intake, or actually not the right amount, it's more what you're drinking. Usually, usually wheat beers and greasy food. <laughs> yes. You had no problems hitting, hitting them out of the park, dude. <laughs> Joe's, Joe's hit Trained a grand slam there. since he came over to me. Yeah, dude. <laughs> what you I've, only, I've, only got, I've only got two. Four more Bases yet. loaded. Yeah. Bases are loaded. Dude, that, that, <laughs> that is so, <laughs> that's so perfect, park. man. That's so perfect because tonight we were recording a, a music video for Grand Slam. And since Joe's been here, he's shit three times. I'm working on it. Can you Can you pull through for us, Joe? tonight it's possible perhaps it's, some been, more on, it's been like every half hour i got about 20 minutes to go perhaps you'd like some more pepper jack cheese <laughs> yeah that could probably lube up the pipe i'm sure Ooh. that's another interesting one like like dairy products if you're lactose intolerant they make you puke out of your ass it makes you shit more because yes. i've heard some people are lactose intolerant and it actually backs them up no, dude, I am, and it's, like, liquid. I think it could be either or. Then why do people always talk about getting constipated when they eat shitloads of cheese? I don't know. Some binding agent? I don't know. <laughs> 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 I imagine if you stuff enough cheese in your ass, it's going to clog it up. <laughs> it melts in your system. Yeah, dude. <laughs> On its way out, it cools down and seizes up. Well, Jesus. <laughs> Speaking of... Uh, biohazard waste <laughs> why don't we play another song about 
Uh, human. The wait. Um, excrement. There you go. <laughs> my, my vocabulary is suffering tonight. This is another song off of the new album. It's called Fan of Your Nation. I'm a fan of your nation, pissing all over the place. Don't bother shitting, the shitting's just a waste. You gotta find, you gotta find that special place to let the other river flow with such grace. Red, 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 red. So that was Fan of Your Nation. A little disclaimer there. I was uh, 16 when I wrote that song. And it's a damn good song. <laughs> so, yeah, in, in case anyone's wondering, that is me actually pissing. Um, just ran a microphone up into the bathroom and, you know, <laughs> the rest is history. He made sure to use one that we don't use on vocals, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. There there might have been a little splash back there. And uh I don't know, there's really nothing much I can say about that song. It's just supposed to be funny. There's not really any deep meaning or anything. Yeah. <laughs> that is very deep. We could oh uh, I mean if you do you think about that song when you have to pee? Sometimes, I must like say. Really, really bad. Yep. <laughs> you guys? Yeah. It comes to my mind for sure. Can't. I can't even think of the last time that I had to pee so bad I thought I was going to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to happen a lot more when you're a little kid. Well, <laughs> it's cause, maybe that's just because you don't have as much self-control when you're a kid. There's so much more interesting things to do as a child than <laughs> take a leak. <laughs> yeah. That song definitely brings me back to when I got over uh, pissing myself, for sure. I was about 16. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> I never had a problem with pissing myself, but I don't know. I I still, given the the correct situation, <laughs> can shit my pants. Yes. <laughs> w- would you care to tell that story? John? <laughs> <laughs> 
All I can say is never try to break into your own house with a case of explosive diarrhea. <laughs> I'll let everybody fill in the blanks, dude, because it will end in, in a Home Alone-esque uh, demise. Ultimately, I, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. All right, fair enough. <laughs> also, don't drink too much Chianti, because that'll, that'll do it to you. Yep. Mm. Have you ever noticed your your poop almost looks black when you drink a lot of w- red wine? No. Maybe it's the antioxidants. <laughs> oh, it's the purple. Or the. Uh, uh, yeah, the reason why it thins your blood, right? No. No, hmm? grapes are purple. It's the. Oh, there's a fucking word for it. Just pigment? No, not pigment. It's. Can't remember. Well, anyway, why don't we refocus here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> for for those listeners who aren't like really into hearing about shit and piss <laughs> for what? twenty minutes, we just switched to wine. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're on the booze now. I guess my mind is still five minutes ago. So, what's the next song we're gonna listen to, Dave? I don't know. Do you got any preferences? You've heard some of this new album. In fact, John has been uh, assisting us in mixing it. Any words of wisdom up to any engineers out there that might be listening? Ooh. <laughs> so <Don't>. long. <laughs> <laughs> do it because it's fun. Because there's really no other reason to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that... Have you guys already, uh, what songs have you guys done? Tonight? Yeah. Grand Slam and Your Nation is the only two. Really? Yeah. We, do we have any songs about vomiting, perhaps? No. 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 Damn. There's always, like, Sperm Factory. Or... There oh, we yeah, go. that's about oh, things yeah. coming out of you. Nantucket. <laughs> Nantucket. <laughs> well, let's just, let's play Sperm Factory then. Sounds sperm great. Sperm Factory is good. Yeah, this song is just about uh, not being a, a man whore, pretty much. Because <laughs> just a really, we're just a horny fucking sixty. It sounds it's, a song called Sperm Factory sounds like it would be about being a man whore. Well, yeah, that, I mean, it's about being one and how it's not cool, basically. Because <laughs> you know, in the lyrics, I say. Um, <laughs> Sorry. And on that note. Sorry, false alarm. <laughs> Here it comes. False alarm. I cannot fucking think right now. <laughs> Dave, you gotta think. This operation would be nothing without you. How does the song go? Sperm. <laughs> Sperm factory. Fuck it, dude. Sperm. Let's just play it. <laughs>
Burn Factory. Another uh, deep, deep song. John, do you have a comment? I do have a comment. After listening to that song, it just it just occurred to me of, about what what one song that I would like to talk about. Just because I don't, I think I've asked you several times, but I've forgotten. Um, Fast and the Furious, dude. Uh huh. Did you come up with the song first, or was the movie first? It was the movie first. Oh, right. Man. I I don't dude think I could have so, swore dude, dude. I, I remember you told I, me. I, that was like it was that like was a month so and long and a half ago before the movie came out yeah. we didn't even know it was coming out because we were playing it and we were like hey that song's like Fast and Furious that's really we should play it not yeah well because hey, you know Fast and Fast and Furious is a, is a pretty common yeah. like Phrase. expression used yeah. I mean like you can I mean I even think like they used like fast and furious like in comic books or cartoons yeah. or like yeah. you know well, I remember we had that part of that song and we didn't have it done and just remember it we called it fast and furious well may- maybe this is how it went down because what i'm remembering is i when that movie was in the theaters playing um my girlfriend and i at the time had gone to a movie and we were driving home and that movie had just gotten out and there was people all yeah, over the road the around the theater who were just driving fucking insane. After seeing the movie? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> fucking <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, racing oh each God. other and shit. Like, <laughs> this awesome. car in front of me drives <laughs> off the road <laughs> into the ditch and fucking comes back up. And I remember just being appalled by the... like like And... Plus, I wasn't a fan of the movie. <laughs> Plus, I wasn't a fan of the movie okay. anyway. I thought the whole, you know, soup well, maybe, of my rice burner. <laughs> soup of my rice burner. The, the song was written, but the lyrics were not finalized. I, I think know. that might have been it. Matt would know. So, is that what the song is about? Yes. This is leaving the movie theater in disgust. Well. <laughs> Absolute disdain. I mean, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, like, I guess it's like, what did you, what do you expect? But like, you don't leave like, you know, I don't remember seeing the Terminator and like coming out and watching people like fucking (laughs) shoot each other and like melt into the ground. Yeah. uh, It's a fucking bend metal and shit. Car movie, you're like, I especially noticed it when like you're driving by Bandemir up there and like, you know, just got out. Everybody in their fucking minivan is driving like they stole a fucker up yeah. miles an hour because they just watch cars do well, you know, eight second miles. You know, I saw Mortal Kombat with my, a bunch of my buddies <laughs> and Mortal one Kombat. of my buddy's little brothers. And when we uh, got out of the movie, his little brother thought he was like Raiden or something. He tried to kick our asses. It was pretty cool. You know what? I digress, actually, because I think immediately after if not after i saw the movie the first time it was within the proximity of a couple of days um when we saw when i saw fight club for the first time i saw it with with you know all those guys that lived at 63 and immediate or not immediately but we for at least a couple of weeks after that movie, we're in the backyard, like, oh, a couple months, like, kicking the shit out of each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, like, like that was always oh, the yeah. cool thing. It's like, dude, we'll fight, man, but we're still bros, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fucking people got fucked up. And then, and then after, like, we decided that, like, getting drunk and, like, punching each other was probably, like, a bad idea. <laughs> then we just, like, delegated it, or not, or not delegated it, but decided that wrestling would be a better, a better way to go about things. And that, just kind of got a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually mutated into chair wrestling. It, well, it was just, yeah. I, <laughs> just, I mean, it's just more like, like when you when you weigh, you know, when you're six feet tall and weigh, you know, a hundred and forty pounds, like, and you go wrestle some dude who fucking wrestled in high school because you're drunk and like you watched Fight Club and you think it's a good idea, like, it's just. <laughs> It's, it's, yeah, it's bad. (laughs) You realize things about yourself and the other person. (laughs) Uh, There's lots of smells involved. (laughs) You realize, for me, I realize why I never wrestled, to be honest. Because you don't like sweaty balls in your face. Yeah, it's a little gay. (laughs) Or Bob's bitch tits. 
<laughs> That's right. Well, as far as Fast and Furious, it's really more about like, you know how when people re- get really in the cars and they get that kind of macho male ego going about their cars and and you know whatever it's. I don't know if you'd consider it compensation for anything, but well, if it's a if it's a cool car, it's fine, dude. I know, but you know, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. It's just ninety eight Ford Taurus. Yeah. Well, yeah. Dude, dude, if you have a restored a restored vintage car, I I know what you're saying though. Like those you, those like, dudes who are just like all, you know, muscle heads who are just like think they're bad shit because they got some fucking car, and they go, you know, it's uh, to me that's what that movie was about. And I never even saw the fucking movie, but that just idea of those <laughs> well, those kind of well, people. There you go, Dave. I know I, I have. You didn't I'm, see it. I'm out of my problem. league here. That may be your problem. You're out of you know, I have no room to. I have no room to talk. I know. I I am humble about so this in every way. Watch but the movie and maybe I should. Maybe that. I should. Right. Somebody once tried to race me in a U-Haul truck. <laughs> No this shit. Bitch has got balls. Oh yeah, he was bur- he was burning the tires at every light. It was awesome. <laughs> well, fuck. We, we might as well play this one too. Yeah, play it, Let's man. It. All right, here it is. Oh, and by the way, this is my uh, Honda Magna that you hear revving in the background. Yeah, Dave, the anti fucking macho guy. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Hey. It's a motorcycle, not a fucking car, all right? There's a goddamn difference. <laughs> what? Two, Two wheels, wheels and a fucking windshield? <laughs> Jesus. Fuck you. Fast and the Furious, again, on our new old album coming out, Rebiff. We'd like to thank John for being here tonight and for all of the help he and guidance and mixing he's given me on this album. Indeed. I was glad I was invited. It was some good laughs. This, yep. is, the, this is the first podcast I've done. <laughs> I must say it's uh, actually more fun than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, it's good times. All right, well um we'll we'll be uh talking to y'all soon um 
be on the lookout for a lot of Biff happenings. Show coming up at the Cricket. The uh, no comment from Cricket Seth's on the Hill. Region. I'm trying. Hold on. <laughs> Seth's trying to fart again to but, uh, close out the night. Before I do that, though, I'd like to say happy birthday to Dave. Yes. That's Thanks, right. guys. Manana. Indeed. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Send presents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just re- I just realized this. Thanks, dudes. It's, wait, it's his birthday in an hour. Well, yeah. Fifty minutes. Fifty minutes. Yep. Twenty-six. My favorite number. It's gonna be a good year. Oh, uh, it's, dude, it's better than twenty-five, <laughs> dude. I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. Nowhere as good as twenty-four or any of the years before that. <laughs> it's all downhill it's all from downhill. here. <laughs> is the end yeah we gotta go um until next time i'm dave i'm seth i'm joe we're biff Biff (laughs) biff.com signing off (laughs) catch you later everybody